Let me tell you the most important lesson that I've learned in my eight years of training with the barbell, or uh, even longer than that. Uh, I've played basketball throughout my you know, teenage years, even before that. Uh, but for the last eight years, I've concerned myself with strength training with the barbell, specifically getting stronger at the squat, uh, deadlift, and the bench press. Uh, I'll tell you straight up, the most important lesson I've learned is to do high reps. All of the stuff that I've read, all of the experimentation that I've done, and trust me, I have beat around the bush like nobody's business. You know, somebody tells me something, all of a sudden I have a question mark to it. I got to a point, basically, I want to say five years ago, four years ago, where I just got fed up with everything that I was reading, all of these so-called experts telling me something that basically they heard and they heard from someone and so blah, 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 blah. all of a sudden, like some guy somewhere, not very intelligent, you know, was just a freak of nature, uh, just a phenom of genes. And he said he did this and all of a sudden there's like 50 generations after him doing the same thing uh, where this guy could have just sat in the damn gym looking at the weights, he would have gotten stronger. I got to a point where I got really frustrated with all of this sciencey stuff. You know, I would go to work and I would work in a science orientated environment. And then I would come over here into this soft science, this sports science, this powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, all of this stuff. And I found it to be soft. It's very, very soft. There is like a hundred different experiences leading to the same gold medal. A hundred different roads that lead to the number one spot. That's soft. There's no hard science. There's no one way. You know, physics and chemistry is like locked in. Biology is kind of this wishy-washy psychology type of thing, man, where it's all kind of like, yeah, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. There's so many different variations. And so I went the hell with that. I'm experimenting. And through this experimentation, I've learned this. High reps work. They restore your body and they get you stronger. Let me tell you the two examples that I have. I've got the squat and I've got the, uh, the bench press. Uh, you guys know exactly my experience with the squat in recent times. I've spoken about it at great length. Breathing squats, sets of 50 with an empty freaking barbell, uh, sets of 30 with 60 kilos, sets of 50 with 60, uh, with, with 60 kilos. These kinds of things have let me over and over again put on gains in my strength. Uh, I am predominantly a strength-orientated human being. I don't care about bodybuilding, so you can criticize me, you know, from that angle, all you want, but all I really care about is strength, you know, and I don't want to say strength at all costs because I don't want to be 250 kilos. I'm not like that. I, I want to be a normal human being that can run after my child without getting a freaking uh, a heart attack, you know, after the fifth step. So I want to be a normal shaped human being that is strong. That's my number one thing. Um, so high reps got me stronger over and over again, both in the front squat and, and the, in the back squat. One thing that I haven't spoken about in a very long time, and that's something that I don't really care too much, this is why I haven't, is that I have had exactly the same experience with push-ups relating to bench press. I did hundreds of reps every single day leading up to that 140 kilo bench PR that I did two years ago now, probably two and a half years ago. Uh, why did I not, why am I not at 180 kilos uh, bench PR right now, frankly, I'm not that excited about it, but it was something that I did care a little bit about back then. I did something called greasing the groove. I've spoken about this also at great length, but this is where all of this started. I would literally grease the groove with push-ups, doing anywhere between 30 or 60% of my maximum repetitions multiple times every single day for like months on end. And what that led to me uh, was this huge accumulation of volume resistance. I, I was able to like bang out like 10, 15, 20 of these damn sets. And what I ended up doing was maxing out at 140 kilos bench PR. Now, to me, that is very impressive. And at the time, it was a big question mark and I didn't really understand what's going on. Now, with the experience that I have with the squat over and over and over again, I've repeated the same experiments several different times with a very consistent result, right? And so what do we know about science and theories and theorems and laws and rules and whatever? If you can repeat the same result over and over again with the same set of circumstances, then something is about those circumstances. Something is happening. There is some control to be had and there's something to be studied from that. I continuously get stronger doing high reps. Hindu squats, sets of 50 with the bar, sets of 50 with 60 kilos, that kind of thing got me stronger. Same with push-ups. 
lots and lots and lots and lots of push-ups. It doesn't even really matter if you're getting a pump or not. With the breathing squats, I was getting a hell of a pump. With the grease and groove method, I was staying the hell away from the pump. So I was doing 60% of my max reps in an effort to stay away from the pump and just purely accumulate fluff volume. Now, fluff, volume, and sets of 50 are really frowned upon in this community of, no, 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 one, twos, and threes, and fours, and fives, get you strong, everything else is rubbish. It's fluff, it's rubbish, it's fluff. And then you have winning warm-ups who speak volumes about that. Then you have Louis Simmons who speak volumes about doing a set of 60 on the freaking reverse hyper. No, 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 but sets ones, and twos, and threes, and fours, and fives are strictly what gets you stronger. But what about these Norwe Norwegian lumberjacks, right? You know, the guys that are chopping down trees and then hauling this damn wood for like, kilometers on end. What are they doing? They're doing sled pulls. And this is what Louis studied and this is how sled pulls came to be in the West. He noticed that all these guys from Norway or wherever the hell they were from Sweden, they were extra extraordinary freaking deadlifters. And he, he basically, you know, uh, uh, precipitated it down to this expression of just, you know, uh, uh, pulling a sled, pulling a freaking timber tree thing behind you for kilometers on end. How many reps is that? It's not one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four, it's not five, it's 100 plus reps. Every single day, every single day, every single day, every single day, all of a sudden the tissue's like, shit, we gotta get stronger. It really upsets me, it really frustrates me when I think back about all of the times that I went on tnation.com, when I watched all these YouTube videos and everyone ever spoke about triples, doubles, ones, triples, doubles, ones, all five is cardio, six is cardio, 10 is a marathon. It's like, like I came from a basketball world. And hearing this language was embarrassing to me. I was like, are these people insane? Are these people really telling me a set of tennis cardio? Like, are these people in a wheelchair strapped to an oxygen cylinder? Is this cardio? And so over the years and me beating around the bush and, 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 and experimenting with all this shit, I finally threw away the shackles of this stupidity, thinking that ones, twos, and triples in your, in your training cycle, is all, that's all we need to do, Right? Then I've described the Bulgarian method. That is literally all they did. Just singles for freaking days upon years up on end. And then after you dig a little bit more, you realize that there was a, a building block to this. They actually did some GPP, blah, 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 blah. And so what we know is the Bulgarian method, Bulgarian uh, 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 squat training was basically a symptom of, of a bigger system. Like they actually did other stuff, you know, before, you know, uh, peaking for these tournaments. Now these tournaments... Even Abhijev wanted them to do like 100 freaking different uh, uh, competitions every year. This is why he always was in a picking block essentially with these athletes. But these athletes were advanced, elitists. They were like top of the freaking food chain, man. They're not Ivan, the nurse, the father, the freaking guy who's there mowing the damn lawn a few times a week and doing weeding. These guys didn't do any of that shit, man. So finally, after all these years, I've escaped from the realms of this Cardio is 10 reps and it does nothing for your freaking strength. Over and over again, I have, you know, somehow uh, uh, through experimentation worked out that no, for me, maybe I'm an alien. Who the hell knows? Maybe I fell from the freaking moon and I landed here. I've got completely different internals to you. When I do high reps, I get bloody stronger, man. I get bloody stronger. I did push-ups. I did Hindu squats and I got PRs, singles top end. That's what I did. Okay. Now you can break that down any way you want about this way, that way. This guy says this way, this way. That is my experience. And I've done it over and over again. I am going to start doing push-ups again. And I really, really, really hope I can reproduce that same result that I did back in the day. What am I going to do? Well, what's the plan, Ivan? Okay. Yes, I'm going to practice my sport. I'm going to try at least bench once a week. You'll see it in today's video. I'm just going to grab the bar, put a couple of plates on, Work up to a single of 120 or whatever the hell is available on the day and then piss off. It's going to take 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever the hell it's going to take. And then I'm going to piss off. I'm going to go home and do some push-ups. That's it. In my mind, I'm thinking right now, uh, I can't wait for these lungs to clear out fully so I can really hammer them again. Uh, I want to do Hindu squats again. I want to do Hindu squats over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, a barbell, 50. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. To me, it doesn't even matter about the weight. Like I'm thinking about actually going down in weight, maybe to 40 kilos so I can stop those rests as much as possible. So I can just get volume in as much as just fluff. Oh, I just want to live in fluff. That's Ivan right now. The only thing I have yet to prove to myself is if this mentality, this approach, this programming, this theory 
works for the deadlift. That is the only thing that I have not done to improve my deadlift. The way I improved my deadlift was doing sets of five with the back squat. But the way I got my squat to 200, 205, 210, 212 is through doing sets of a billion. Okay, so if I can now prove to myself that I can improve my deadlift by doing hypers with sets of 20s and 30s, I'm not going to add any weight. I am not. Sets of 20s, sets of 30s, sets of 40s, this stupid shit, like 1,000 reps. I will end up being a Hindu squatting, high, 45 hypering push-up maniac. That's what I'm going to be. That's literally the program I'm going to run. And in amongst of all of that, I'm going to practice my sport very regularly with the squat, work up to a single or something like that, do these kinds of things. That is literally what's on my mind right now. When I go to my journal and I start reading the shit that I wrote from six years ago, all of a sudden, you know, the adrenaline starts to release, the pissed off hormones start to flush through my brain and I'm like, who do I blame for this shit? Okay, obviously I did not have the knowledge back then that I have right now and the hundreds of pages that I've written this time, I don't have that available. But the, 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 these people, and I don't mean no offense to anybody because the community as a whole is just a whole bunch of mirrors. Everyone bounces you know, ideas around and at the end we kind of learn something and we move on, move on, move on. But I feel, and I, and I hate to, to say this, I feel that there's only a very few amount of people actually thinking in the community like at the top level, right? And there's a lot of people who are genetic beasts, you know, and you feed that guy any program, he's going to improve. I'm not that guy, man. I am literally need to like bash my head through a freaking wall a billion times to get a single freaking kilo in the bar. And I'm so far away from the record. I'm so far away from everyone. But there are some people, and we know a lot of them, who are just good. They're just good. And I just wonder to myself... If I, if I got Clarence Kennedy to do a set of a billion on bodyweight squats, maybe he would get stronger with that as well. Like he does with singles and fives and tens and fifteens and whatever else. That's what I kind of think to myself. These people that we idolize, they're just super responders to freaking anything, man. That's kind of what I think about it. Because to me, I am somebody that doesn't respond to anything. <laughs> Literally, I'm like a non-responder. Now, uh, I don't want to belittle your existence as well because you might be, you know, even lower than me in my numbers and my body weight and whatever, but I've been at this for quite some time and I've been, I've devoted a lot of time into this and, you know, you can't blame me for feeling frustration where like you read all these different things, you experiment all these different things, all these guys have theories and, you know, advice and I, I just, I could never advance. Now, you guys criticize me, some of you guys criticize me about the squad every, everyday business Newsflash, man, I was not born into a squat every day camp. I, I, I wasn't. You know, I've been training for eight years, the last approaching three years, I've squatted every day. But before that, what did I do before that? <laughs> I did a lot of other stuff, man. Like I did a lot of other stuff. And before those five years, I've messed around with the gym doing bicep curls and pull-ups and push-ups at home and all this sort of stuff. So I've got experience with other things, you know. It's just when, I, when this Squat Everyday journey started and when I put myself on the map to you guys with this, I became the Squat Everyday guy, which is fair enough because, you know, no one's ever really done this, I suppose, at least documented it on YouTube like this. Um, but I'm just trying to pass on the information that I've learned. And there's a bit of frustration there because, well, because I've been misled. I've been misled to think that anything over five reps is cardio. And the word cardio in the strength you know, world, it's like rubbish. It's literally, must well say rubbish. If you're doing more than five reps, it's rubbish. Rubbish. And I can't emphasize enough how much I disagree with this idea. In fact, I would say to the new beginner who's listening to this, the guy in the first year, please, man, spend 90% of your freaking time, 95% of your time doing fluff and least amount of times doing these fives and doubles and triples and ones and whatever else you want to do. Just minimize that shit. And I bet you, man, you will have better results. I honestly think deep down in my soul right now that if somebody said to me, Ivan, stick with bodybuilding and bodybuilding like extra fluffy bodybuilding, not even like six to 12 reps, 12 to like a trillion, okay? 12 to trillion, bingo. Start there, never go below 12. And I reckon in, in eight years time, you're going to freaking walk in this house and you're going to, you know, 
ring up a builder to be like, hey man, you gotta expand the front door because I can't freaking enter through here. My, I'm so freaking wide and muscular. That's literally what I think will happen. If you're a beginner, and I am not an expert, no, I don't have any published articles, no, I'm not affiliated with any of the freaking Ivy League schools around the world or whatever, I am no one. I am some guy who's there with his little alchemy lab with the barbells and plates, mixing all this shit up, and I've come up with results constantly consistent with high reps. That's me, okay? I, this is me. I'm a rogue hobbyist. And I'm telling you, if you want my humble opinion, stick to freaking high reps and forget about all the other shit. Yes, you can, you can do a little bit of here and there, you know, singles and doubles and triples if you want. But no, know clearly that the majority of your success is going to be in the high reps. That's my existence, my experience, and that's certainly going to be my method moving forward. The only thing that is kind of a thorn in my bum, the only thing that I'm not 100% sure is, can this actually work directly for the deadlift? If I can do live on the freaking hyper 45, go to sleep on the damn thing, right? Thousands of reps per week, right? And if I can show to myself that I can increase that deadlift sucker, the single, purely doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps on the hyper, if I can increase the deadlift max with that, case freaking closed. I've got squats, I've got benches, and I've got deadlifts all responding to high reps. If that is the case, man, if that is the case, I'm going to be so freaking happy to finally have some consistency across the board. That's what I think. It's frustrating. It's frustrating that it's taken me so freaking long to get to this point. But I'm happy I'm at this point. And I look very, very happily towards the future to see whether I can replicate these things again. The push-ups are back with a vengeance. Today I did sets of basically kind of like pull-ups I've done with 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way to, to 1. With, with push-ups I did 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, you know, 8, all that stuff. In 2 is kind of falling down. 110 reps was done today and I already feel like I'll be paying for this tomorrow with, you know, a bit of back action, whatever, uh, soreness. Um, yes, I did another freaking 11 sets uh, with the uh, 45 hypers and that was basically the session. That's what I thought was the juicy part of the session. That That is the builder. That is the reason why I came to the gym. The singles that I did on the... Um, on the front squat is my sport. I'm practicing my sport. I'm shooting my free throws. That's what I'm doing. But to get better at the free throws, I'm not shooting the free throws in, in a way, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, I think the 45 hypers work really well with push-ups because you're freaking disabled after the 45 hypers, essentially. Uh, so it, it kind of works really well. They kind of fit, to, fit together, upper body, lower body kind of thing. Um, so... That's what I think. If you're listening to this and you're doubting everything I've said, if you have it in your heart, man, just give it a freaking go. Give it a go. I know it's embarrassing as hell to think push-ups are going to do wonders for your bench press. I got to 140 and I don't even care about the sucker. Okay. So now I'm kind of like extra motivated to jump on this damn bench press bandwagon and do it doing this shit. Now I'm kind of excited about the bench press because I really want to prove to myself that this high rep bullshit can be repeated. If it's not repeated, well, then I go back to the freaking psych ward and I tell them, throw the key away because I don't really know what the hell is going on. <sighs> Taylor, Samuel, and Steven, you guys are beasts. Thank you so much for the support. Everybody else on the Patreon list, you guys are also beasts. Thank you so much for the support. Everyone in the comments and Instagram. Um... I want to say I'm sorry for the rant, for the extra bit of energy in it. But sometimes I close my eyes and I, I don't know, I just talk to myself like this and I realize, shit, man, some bunch of people are going to listen to this. But anyway, it is what it is and <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.